This is The Open. I'm uh, John Ehrlichman. One of the constant frustrations for Canadians wishing to travel is the high prices for airline tickets. In 2017, Flair Airlines entered the market as an ultra-low fare carrier with a plan to shake up the competitive landscape. But while the Edmonton-based company has grown its market share, it has also spent some time navigating headlines about its financial situation and even more specifically, paying its bills. This week, for example, we learned through court documents that Flair has a roughly $67 million worth of unpaid uh, taxes with the CRA, which the company says is tied to import duties associated with Flair planes. If the matter is not resolved, the CRA could seize Flair's property, although since that story began making the rounds, the CEO Stephen Jones has come out and said the company actually does have a deal in place with the government to pay those taxes, although details on the plan were limited. He also noted Flair's expansion plans in the short term may be impacted by challenges with Boeing in delivering additional planes. Through a spokesperson, Mr. Jones requested an opportunity to join us on BNM Bloomberg to discuss all this in more detail, and he joins us now from Ottawa. Mr. Jones, thanks very much for your time. We appreciate it. Let's just jump straight into it. Uh, I want to start with the unpaid taxes. Uh, in an interview you've done since this story surfaced, it was said you're, you're on some kind of monthly payment plan to pay the roughly $67 million. Can you elaborate on that and, and when you expect to have all those taxes, the entire amount paid? Yeah, absolutely. And so the story has actually, I think, been uh, been taken in, in a very interesting direction by the media because we've actually had a plan in place <clears throat> with the CRA to uh, to repay the overdue payables for quite some time. Uh, the document that's been referred to was actually made public back in November, been picked up more recently. But we have a monthly plan that we are repaying these overdue importation duties. Um, on a, on a regular basis. We're completely up to date with the plan. We're fully current with it. And the, um, the document that you refer to is in many ways, um, it's a backstop uh, should we ever stumble on that plan, but we've got no intention of doing it. Um, I would actually liken it to uh, a house mortgage uh, where you agree with the bank that you're going to repay them a certain monthly amounts. The mortgage documents actually also allow the bank to seize and sell your house if you don't uh, make the payments. But of course, most people keep up with their payments. And so that's the situation we're in right now. We've got a, a plan in place. We're fully current with it. And nobody's going to be seizing and selling the assets of Flair. OK, uh, noted. And, and just to be clear, a spokesperson for Flair reached out to BNM Bloomberg to set up this interview. So, you know, here, here's your opportunity with the media to set the record straight. You still didn't quite answer my question because we have a lot of stories right now about the $67 million figure. You mentioned there are monthly payments you're making. Um, but in terms of the, the taxes that you've paid, is there any more light you can share on, on how much you paid, what the actual amount looks like, w w when that amount will be paid? Well, so the amount is the $67 million, so that's the start point, and our monthly payments are addressing that over time. And no, I won't say the, the monthly amounts. I don't think it's particularly relevant. What is relevant is that we're completely current. It's a plan that's been agreed between FLIR and the CRA, um, and it's, it's um, dealing with the amount. So uh, there is zero concern that customers should have around our assets being seized and sold. That's not going to happen. What led, what led to $67 million in taxes specifically on export duties? Can you, can you explain that? I'm sure it's import duties, not export oh, sorry, duties. Excuse but me, yeah. The, yeah, so the, it seems like a big number, $67 million, and in, in pretty much anyone's terms it is. But this is an industry of big numbers. We've imported nearly 20 uh, 737 maxes. They cost $50 million US dollars each. Um, and as they come across the border from the U.S. into Canada, um, manufactured by Boeing in the States, um, they attract an import duty. And so it's that import duty that has um, accrued, and that's the one that we're now repaying. Now, I think um, one, of the, one of the things, I mean, most of the time we're uh, interviewing executives with public companies. In, in those kind of uh, cases, when, when you're hearing a lot of numbers thrown around and you're trying to determine a financial picture for a company, we can see that. It's publicly disclosed. In your case, you're, you're a private company, so we don't know financially what's mm -hmm. happening. So let me just ask a straightforward question. Are you a, are you a profitable company today? Uh, so I don't think we need to go into Flair's financials here. As you said, we're a private company. 
Uh, what I can say is that we're delivering savings to Canadians that no other airline is delivering. We've delivered more than $400 million in savings to Canadians over the past year. In the absence of flair, that would be money that would be spent by consumers and put in the pockets of the big guys. So Flair's here to bring affordable travel to all Canadians, and that's what we're doing. One of the reasons I asked the profitability question uh, is because, you know, as people have been reacting to these headlines, I want to show a, uh, share a quote with you from John Gradeck. He's uh, uh, with McGill's School of Aviation Management. Um, he said in an interview this week with CTV's Your Morning, uh, quote, you don't reach this point with the CRA unless debt has been outstanding and unpaid for a while. It's really disconcerting to me to see that the financial situation at Flair has reached a point where now we have the potential uh, seizure of assets as an option for the CRA. I, I know you just clarified that, uh, given the conversation you've had with the CRA, that that is not uh, an option you think is actually going to happen. But how would you respond to that comment? Um, so I would say that that John should, um, you know, John worked for a long time for Air Canada, and we know um, that people come into these conversations with different perspectives. But what I can say is exactly what I've said already, is that we've got a great arrangement with the CRA, we've got a good relationship with the CRA, and we are paying our bills. And so um, I, I think that actually, and I, I would reflect this to BNN, um, and particularly I think you guys were one of the first to jump on this kind of sensationalist angle about the, um, about the situation we're in, which I don't think does our customers and the uh, consumers in Canada any favours. Uh, for you guys to be putting the uh, the more sensationalist angle on this. The real story is that Flair is here delivering affordable airfares to Canadians. And uh, commentators will say what commentators will say, but we're the ones in the front line bringing affordable travel to Canadians. Mr. Jones, with respect, I'm not sure what's sensational about this conversation we're having right now. We did invite you on to get clarity on all of these numbers. Um, tying it back to people who have been using... Um, uh, your service to uh, have more affordable airfare, which is something you were just referencing. I think one of the broader questions that has come up in the light of some of these headlines is, um, at the end of the day, um, how do you ensure that uh, people don't feel like if they are booking flights in the coming months that they have concerns about the company's finances? So, so what are you doing as a company to alleviate any of that concern with uh, some of your airline customers? Well, exactly what I'm doing right now, which is here telling you and telling the public that we're up to date with our payments, that there was nobody that's going to seize and sell our assets. And so I think, you know, while it might sell good stories, the real story here um, is what's um, delivering affordability to Canadians, and it's, it's Flair Airlines. Do you think, um, you know, if people are uh, watching and maybe they're looking to book uh, flights uh, in the coming months, um, I mean, could, could you share a pledge that anyone who is booking tickets on Flair right now is not going to be impacted in the future by issues other than, you know, the normal things that happen in, uh, in the airline industry, like travel delays? Yeah, 100% I can. And I can say that our sales haven't even blinked over the last few days. And so while it might be good for selling stories and getting conversations going, the real story is affordable airfares. And what is happening in the in the Canadian market and what has happened over the past four years, which is that Flair has brought down the fares for all Canadians. In the absence of Flair, uh, not only would you not have cheap fares on Flair, you wouldn't have cheap fares on the other big airlines either because they'd have the market back to themselves. And so it's not an easy path we've chosen. It's a difficult one. I'm not going to pretend it's all smooth. It isn't. It's hard work. Every day it's hard work. But we're here delivering the results. Nobody else is doing that. So I think that's the story. And I, I will just reiterate, this is the first time I'm having a conversation about this latest um, headline on my program, and, and you did request the opportunity to come on. So we ha are having this conversation in real time. Uh, we're not looking to sell anything. We're looking to have straightforward conversations. I did mention the situation with Boeing. Uh, you did say something in an interview this week about your near-term expansion plan and how that might be impacted. Can you give us an update there? Oh, sure. Yeah, we had the aircraft that we were expecting to deliver in the spring uh, and early summer of this year. Um, there are delays out of Boeing that are well documented. Um, those aircraft were no longer able to be delivered at the time. They were going to deliver into the 
into the late fall, which is not a great time for airlines to be growing. And so this year will be one of, of um, low or no growth, uh, but we expect to be back to full growth in 2025, where we've got a clear path of air, aircraft deliveries.